Yo, what's up, world? Welcome to my live chat with the lovely Bushe Um I haven't done this in a while, so I'm excited. Bushe is a DJ, she's an actress, and she's here, yeah, man, you know, she's like a very dope person, you know. So um, I'm a DJ, you know, those who know me uh, know that I go by the name, the journalist DJ, but my real name is Andy. So what I do is that from time to time on my Instagram live, I just chat to some of my favorite uh, uh, DJs. So the guest of honor tonight is none other than the lovely Butle Muletzani. And, you know, we're just going to be talking to her about her career, you know, you know, and just talk about her journey, Jay. It's Piso. What's up, Piso? Thanks for joining us. Hey. Hi, how's this? I'm good, man. Hey, Tsejo, what's up? That's Fato over there. Fato, Fato, are Copa Dijo. Fato, no, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Aren't you cold? There? It's so cold. Oh, my God. Like, it's crazy. Like, no, I'm wearing like a lot. This is a very, very um, warm, warm jacket. Oh, okay. That's good. Because it's so yeah. cold. Like, I'm, I'm hot. Like, I'm Where chilly. are you? But Where are I'm you? At the crib. I'm at the crib. Oh, you're at the crib. crib. But it's. It's not the cold in Joburg, man. No, no, no. I don't like the cold. Any breeze, if I see a tree moving, Mina, I'm just like, wow, it's cold. I don't like the cold. I don't like feeling uncomfortable. I don't like being cold. So, yeah. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very long uh, winter for you then? Very, very long. And I can't stand winter. I'm not, I'm not the girl. I'm not the girl. It's as man. There's only like three months left of winter. That's a lot. That's yeah, me. I mean, it's not a lot. You'll be fine, guys. You'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't panic. I don't anyway. like material. I'm allergic to material. I don't like layers. Like, I don't like a lot of layers in my body. So, like, that's one thing. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't. I can't. Well, there's, a, there's another option for that. You can just get paid up and then, you know, you'll be cool. That's, that, that's it if you're not paid up already. But let's not go there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's 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 not go there man thanks for doing yes, the interview nice. so basically i just have chats you know from time to time with some of my favorite um djs you know because um i'm a journalist and i'm also a dj myself so so yeah man it's just you know to talk about the industry particularly the you know the house music scene because there's one scene that's very technical and um, there's not enough content there. So, you know, I just wanna, I just wanna, you know, play around with that content a bit on my Instagram live. So thank you. So, but you, before we get there, man, you know, you, you look beautiful as always, you know. Uh, thank you. We're trying to look our best, even with this lockdown. Salons are not open. So, you know, we do our best trying to do our hair. So, I mean, have to make yeah, it work. Yeah, no, you are making it work. So clearly, yeah. we also have other hidden talents. Uh, yes, me, me and talents, we are like one. Me, like I, I, me, like you can't touch me. You can't. You just mm. can't. So okay. Good job. So you're an actress, right? You're yes. a DJ. You're a presenter. What other What other talents are there? that we don't know about? I don't know. I guess I'll have to find out because I, I really don't know. I just like what I like. Like, I love hair. I love I love beauty. I love shoes. I love handbags. I just... But hair is my thing. Like, you can see. Like, hair is literally mm -hmm. one thing I absolutely take my time with. And you just... I really... Like, it's my crown. So, I really do my best in taking care of it. But more than that... Outside of that, rather. Like, I communicate mm -hmm. for a living. Like, with my acting and all the other stuff, I communicate. That's one thing 
I will do for the rest of my life. So, yeah. Okay, communicate. Okay, that's 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 dope. That's a dope way of putting it. Uh, I'm just yeah. That's add... how. That's the best way I feel like I should put it. Like whether maybe one day my dreams might change, but it will still be in line with what I've been doing, which is communicating. I might give like TED talks. I might, you know, I might I might go travel to schools and give talks. It's still communicating. At the end of the day, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. I mean, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to communicate. So, hey, man, it's a lot. Communicating has been my thing. Like, that's one thing I'll, 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 I'll forever do. So, yeah. Okay. You're, you're a communicator, you know. And uh, we were introduced to you, you know, back in Flip. I don't know how many years ago. The, ta- the online hey. challenge. How, how long oh, ago yeah. was that? that i still do remember it it was it was it was fun while it lasted but it wasn't i didn't enjoy the experience oh really i didn't tell us about that remind us what what happened there it wasn't i don't think it was about it wasn't about the lady finding like a star or a presenter for what she wasn't looking for a present. I think she was looking for numbers more than anything. So it wasn't really about the top four. It wasn't really about us. It was about it was more about her. So yeah. And the show came along in the show. She did the show. And the name of the show was the name I came up with for the blog that I've been doing for like years. But because I did not register it, it was easier for it to be stolen and that was Whoa. An excuse Whoa. like let's unpack man you just said a lot <laughs> yeah you, i don't know you why, just, but yeah <laughs> you just said a lot so you came up so you entered a, an online uh presenter search right was it uh and then you you were blogging at the time also we were yeah. uploading what? no blogging blogging blog yes i was i had a blog called Glambition. that was like a name that was like i don't even remember how i came about you know coming up with that name i can't even remember but it made sense for me because i was young i had ambition but at the same time i was like yes i can still have ambition but you know put a little glam to it so i love yeah i still love the glam you know the just the luxury the luxury feeling of you know, just being a woman, I love the glam stuff, which is, whether it's hair, nails, you know, everything. I just love looking good. So it made sense, Glambition. It just made sense. So mm-hmm. clearly she, she probably did a whole lot of research. She probably did, mm-hmm. did a whole lot of research and I somehow made it to the top four and then mm-hmm. I won. Um, I thought, you know, my life was going to be like, was going to change drastically and you know it was just the beginning of me having to get a taste of this industry so yeah it was it wasn't it was unfair more than anything so but anyways nobody's gonna own up to anything but at the end of the day you're a grown-ass person you know what you did and it was wrong just because my only fault was the fact that i did not register my name that was the only thing Everyone mm. can go back because I I do I also didn't like the fact that when I was when I won the presenter search and the show was being advertised and people are seeing this name and people are like oh my gosh you're getting your own show they think now it has turned to you know from blogging to having a whole television thing like it turned mm-hmm. to a whole TV thing a big deal so they automatically thought that that's that's my that's my baby but no it wasn't it was mm. literally. They they pulled out that rug under my feet, so it was that's how it happened. But you live and you learn. We move on. And okay. Yeah. yeah. And 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 what was your biggest lesson from that? Don't trust anybody. I like don't don't trust no one. Like they can say like that's one thing I learned. Like I don't trust. I'm not. I don't easily trust people. I can listen to what you say. I can listen to your promises. But at the end of the day, like, I'm still so guarded. Like, that's one thing I know about myself. I'm extremely, extremely guarded. And I think it will forever stay that way. So don't trust nobody. And if you have a concept, listen. Come on, disclosure. 
pull up those papers let people sign whether they're going to listen to you after that or not at least you did the right thing by protecting yourself and also if you have a name that you think is that you think you might be stealing on gold with that name register it and just keep it for yourself one day you might you know you might need it for something you know it might yeah. not be now but the name came through but maybe 5 years later you know that name will work wonders for you and i did that immediately i still have a name that i registered it's still there i'll use it one day when the time is right and yeah it's going to make me big bucks so we shall see okay so we and then, that so do you still blog no i think after that honestly like i lost the inspiration like mentally like i was so affected like i'm not even going to lie like it was emotionally like cuz i felt betrayed like that was my baby i had big plans for that name like i already you know i was you know doing vision boards around that name so for someone to just take that away from you it was like like i went through pretty much like a mental breakdown you know when you're going through things mentally creatively it just affects a lot of things so that really affected me and i stopped writing for a long time i stopped blogging for a long time and even if i tried i tried doing it again but it just wasn't the same like the feel was not there anymore like i was not feeling it anymore because yeah that one person crushed my dream like it was just yeah i was just in that state i was still so angry about that like i was so angry about it for like quite a few years now i'm over it though but it took me a while to actually get over it because you know you look at these people that you look up to can't you know no nope. They yeah. human beings, you can't trust them so no yeah so wow. i don't really blog that much maybe one day i'll come back but for now i'm okay it was time to dream other dreams i guess i don't know so mm. yeah yeah wow that's that's crazy man so your 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 first touch uh your first glimpse of the industry, the industry. in on you know on a national level is was a rude awakening because somebody it was. Jacked, it really was. jacked your idea but but you know you you live and you learn and then now you know but i i would say that kind of like the the, the positive side of, of that is that you got not you know you got a, i don't want to say i don't want to say exposure because i feel like that's such a bad word yeah but now you're in the industry and then you know now you're on tv you know what i mean mm -hmm. would you say you know how, how was that experience like which experience like being in the industry no 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 like moving from you know being on this online search platform which you what was, was a bad experience and yeah. then now you know uh i don't know if it was months later or a couple of years later now you're on tv now you're in a different space how was that journey like for you it was it was it was cool i mean after that after the whole presenter thing like luckily i okay i had joined an agent at that time i found an agent and i still wanted to do presenting i still wanted to pursue that and what not so yeah i did a, a couple of like fashion shows like you know those little red carpets for like online um stuff i did a whole lot of that and then my agent was like um how about you like try acting as well because i we can see that you've got like a you know quite like a big personality a bold personality you know you you the raw the raw talent is there like you we can work with what you have for now so and then i was like ah, okay i guess you know and then yeah um they started sending me to auditions um whether it's for adverts or for like roles for television and yeah around 2012 2013 like i did a whole lot of adverts like yeah for your wimpy and there was some other alcoholic brand that i did which just a whole lot of stuff which was fun and then yeah then i hopped into acting and then i started my biggest my biggest production that i worked with at that time was generations the old one though not this new one the old mm -hmm. one so that was mm -hmm. the first time i yeah i actually s stepped into the the acting you know the acting world of which i i shared a scene with um of i worked with them as well on greed and desire which was my biggest biggest production tato malamu like yeah he was still mm -hmm. part of generations so i did quite a few scenes with him so that was fun that was fun so and then i fell in love with acting and i was like this is it like this is this is this is what i'm going to do 
This is exactly what I'm going to do. I actually love it. I love it. I, I didn't know that. I thought that you were originally like an actress. And then you were like, okay, I can, I can present as well. I can do this as well. I didn't know that, you know, it was like, by the way. Acting was not know. part of the plan. It definitely was not part of the plan. Like, it just happened. Mm -hmm. If my agent didn't say, you know, try this thing out, I don't think I was ever going to try it. So, yeah, I'm thankful to them that I, you know, tried myself out because, yeah, I, I did a lot of stuff with, um, when it comes to the acting space. And I still want to do more, especially this year. So, yeah. Wow, that's interesting, man. And, you know, um, I know that you also used to, or are you still going to, like, acting classes? Or what was I it? No, pronunciation. What did you say it was? Yeah. Acting classes. No, no, no. You said that you were going for uh, pronunciation classes or something oh, like that. Accent I forgot. classes. Accent classes, accent. yes. Yeah. What, what's that about? What's that about? I mean, I guess being in the acting industry, like, you have to find ways to you know, to have range, like they call it range. If you want more range, you need to learn other techniques, whether it's accent classes or, you know, whether it's, you know, just having to, you know, say I'm having coffee in five different emotions, like just one of those things. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I actually started my acting classes this year. I really just wanted to learn the tech, like the tech, well, the technique side of things, if I can put it that way, because I just, walked into the industry with like raw talent and I didn't know anything. I just knew how to act, but the technique part of it, I, yeah, it just wasn't there. So now I'm just learning a whole lot of things and they're just really simple, obvious things. And those little simple, obvious things, they really make a difference when you're in that audition room. Like they're teaching you like the simplest thing as being able to, you know, just take a moment and breathe. And once you really take a moment and breathe, like it makes, listen, it makes a world of a difference. Like I, and I talk fast. Like I used to talk fast when I did my scenes and what, like I, I'm just like everywhere. Like it's, it's so fast. And mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, sometimes great conversations happen in pause. Just look at your, you know, the person you're doing a scene with in the eye and then automatically, you know, you will find some sort of connection. And that's what I learned. And that's why I'm just like, this year, I'm giving my 500% to my acting because, yeah, I, I think I didn't give myself too much of a chance because I kept on doing other stuff. Like last year, I did my DJing and whatnot, and that took over. And my agent was not really happy about that. She's like, it's great that you're doing other stuff, but we need you back here. Come back. Like, there's mm -hmm. too much to be done here. So, yeah. Wow. And then, I guess... You're also a DJ as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're a dope yeah. DJ. That's actually what the whole, what this interview is about. And now I'm thinking like, damn. <laughs> so <laughs> you blogged, you became a presenter, you became an actress, and then now you're DJing. You know what I mean? Like, what, what makes I have you decide, many you know layers what? as an onion. Why one an onion is an onion? There's so many layers. How yeah, 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 yeah. No, I so fed that you just continue to remove this 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 whole onion until there's nothing left. So that's just me. That's how I describe myself. I have as many layers as an onion, and I mean, it's it's okay to just yeah. I'm very experimental. I just love you know just I just love taking chances. I just want to see what I can do next. Like I think mm. it's always a good thing. Like, it's okay. Mm. Dreams can change. People must understand that. Just because cause there's been, there've been many issues that, well, people were just like, but she's an actress. What does she know about DJing? Babes, mm. I probably even DJ better than some other DJs. Not probably. I think I do. I actually do. Yeah. So, but yeah. Um, yeah, I just love to experiment. Like, this has just always been me. I'm, I'm always curious. I'm just a curious being. So, yeah. And, and and I remember, man, I was so proud of you that you, you know, you, I think within your first year, you were already gigging, like, I think it was a residency at uh, Sisumo. Oh, in Malang. Oh, Sumo, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yes, yeah. The, I think I was, yeah, that year, the first year I started to actually DJ, that's when I got the gig. So, yeah, that was quite, that was quite major. So, yeah. 
Yeah, how, 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 how long were you at Suma for and how, how was the experience? I was there for a year. I was there for a year. More than anything, that was my training ground. Like, that was just like, okay, this is where, you know, I'm going to, if I mess up, I'm messing up here. And because there's going to be other stages where, you know, people actually, people will be watching. So Suma was like more like my training ground. And I've been there for a year because this whole residency thing, I don't like being complacent. I don't like staying at a space for more than a year, especially when it comes to DJing. So I just wanted to, after a year, I just wanted to just see what else I can do in the DJing space. So yeah, I was there for a year. What's more fun for you? Festivals, clubs, or parties? Like where, where, where do you enjoy playing the most? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I like, I really like these ratchet, the, these ratchet places. Like I, I, I've been to quite a few. I was in the Bumalanga area. Like, yeah, no, those, there's, there's like club looking places that are mm -hmm. just, pe the people have a vibe. Like they just want to have a good time. I, lo I love people who just go to a space just to have a good time. And if you have good music, like, listen, like, then you like done with them. So I'm not really picky. I just love a good crowd more than anything. Like I, and I like as well. So yeah, I love a great time slot. So yeah, I'm not picky. You said something interesting, like a club looking place. Like what is, is that a town? Name? What's that? Because it's a small town. It's in Bumalanga is a, like pretty much like a small town. Like there's not really much. Like there's no sumo, there's no taboo vibes like it's not there's no clubs but there mm -hmm. are like chill up places like those yeah man they're not really i'm not gonna say they're tavern looking places but they really are nice spots like they really are beautiful spots but it's a small town like that's that's the only place where it's popping that's how small mm -hmm. it is like that's how the, yeah small the town is because that's the only place that's popping so i've been to quite a few in that side of the world and they really are nice people i think you get the most support from people who are outside of Joburg because Joburg people are spoiled. Joburg people are spoiled Ooh. and it's just, yeah. So I really enjoy playing outside of Joburg. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. And then would you say that like, as, as, as someone who is known for being an actress and a presenter and, and now you're like, okay, guys, I DJ as well. How how did the industry treat you? I mean, they were like, okay, but it's not an actress. I got that a lot. But then I shut them up when I play. Because, you see, if my talent was questionable as well, then I get, you have every right to be angry that I mm -hmm. moved from one career to another. I did not move. I'm just experimenting. If I can do it, if I decide to wake up and decide to be like you came and study law, I'll do it. You're not going to tell me anything. Mm. You're not going to tell me anything. So that's why I just, I've always loved music. I still do. So, I mean, why the hell not? And I always wanted to DJ. But at that time, 2011, 2012, I just didn't want to look like I was doing too many things. So I just left it there. And then how I saw a woman coming out, I was like, this is beautiful. Let me, you know, Mm. Let me also, you know, jump on. That's how I looked at it. I was like, this is beautiful. Women are coming out as DJs. Ah, Nami, I've always know I've always known how to play, so why the hell not? So yeah. That's that's interesting. So, you can't complain about me DJing. But if it was questionable, if it was questionable talent, if I couldn't play, mm. you listen. Go right ahead with your opinions, but I I take every opinion with a pinch of salt because I know like I'm a beast behind those days. So yeah, yeah, yeah man, and, and 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 you know like you you did very well, you're doing very well at that. I remember at some point you were even part of the I don't know if it was like an official ambassadorship. Uh, the Joby strawberry lips. lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is that about? That just came. It just came out of nowhere. Like, it was just one. I think I was at an event, and I just mentioned, I think I mentioned in a conversation that I DJed at some point. I don't know. And then, mm. all of a sudden, 
a few weeks later, like I got a, an email or a call somewhere along those lines. And then, yeah, then they offered me this, you know, they, they wanted me to be part of this campaign. I was like, ah, why not? Like it's, I mean, listen, mm. my first campaign as a DJ, that's a milestone on its own. So I was very excited to be part of it. And I loved what they represented, you know, just whole, mm. the whole empowering of females. And I'm here for that. I'm here for that. Yeah, man, and that, that that was dope. And a lot of, I guess, what I saw from the campaign is that they were actually saying to girls out there that, yo, you can actually also be a DJ. And you can also, you know, infiltrate this male-dominated space. Um, mm. So what if if somebody's looking at you right now, like a, a young girl or whatever, and or a woman, she doesn't even have to be young, and they're like, yeah. yo, I also want to be in the space. What is the first thing that, what is the first advice that you would say to them like the first thing that they need to do if they want to be have a chance at this game i mean you must do it for the right reasons obviously like if you want this overnight success this overnight success can take you 30 years i mean you might be doing this for like years and years and years and nobody's gonna see what you're doing behind the scenes and then one day bam you have this big moment of yours and people think it just came last night this big moment came last night but no it doesn't work like that like over i was having a conversation with a good friend last night and we we're just talking with he, um just this overnight success it took it can take one person 30 years or 50 years because they've been working towards that goal so yeah just be in it for the right reasons know why you're doing it know that there will be moments where you'll be broke if you can't stand the broke life, uh, you better find other means or you better, like, you just have to make it work. So, because I remember starting out in this industry, I started out with people, with a few of my friends then in 2010, like joining agencies and things like that, trying to, you know, enter this industry. And I'm literally the only person who's still sticking around in this industry because they, they just couldn't handle it. They just couldn't handle the pressure of being broke, of like just so many things. They just couldn't handle it. So I was like, I can Bye. I'm staying here. So just, just, just know why you're doing it. Just, mm -hmm. yeah, figure out your end goal. And once you know why you're doing it, I feel like the rest will just fall into place. Because yeah, there will yeah. be any people who will be broke. So if you and think you're going to make money overnight, but you got nothing coming. And I, I, I think now, you know, the message is clear that the entertainment game, especially in, in Mzanzi, you know, it's not as glamorous as people think. People think, you know, there, there's no money in this case, you know. There is money, but you, you have to there work is. Really Just hard. You have to know where to find it or it comes at the right time. But there is money that I, I, I yeah. There is money, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, man, you know, you, you also do quite a bit of work. I, you did some work with ponds, you know, going to schools. They say you went to over 124 schools? 124 schools, yeah. Yeah. Damn. How, how, how did that happen? Tell us about that experience. Um, I think it was after the whole presenter search thingy. So I've been getting a lot of work after that. So that's a that's looking on the bright side. I got a lot of work out of that. So yeah, there've just been many offers coming through regarding you know doing talks and things like that. So that's how I basically got it. Like I got an email and I accepted, you know, signed the contract, got paid well, and then did my tour. And mm. it was really fun having to talk to, you know, young girls about hygiene and looking after themselves and looking after their skin and just, you know, just. Going through, you know, getting adolescent, adolescent, the mm -hmm. adolescent, you know, just giving those talks. It was really, really fun. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I could do it again mm -hmm. if I was offered mm -hmm. that opportunity because it's so fun. It's really so fun. It sounds like things just come to you, man. Like, what's your secret? Well, you know, how's your management looking like? I don't even have a manager. I do things myself. I just think it comes with just being a nice person. You just have to, the, the, I th when you're a nice person, it's easier. But many people are like, they're like weird and they're like fucked up and they're just rude, but they still get the work. But at the, at, the, at the end of the day, I think, I just feel like I'm easy to work with personally. And I keep time because they've been most of the, I've done a few 
things in the acting space and I've got the roles without having to audition simply because I'm that girl that's always on time, that always does the job well. That this, this just, yeah, that just stays out of drama. So most of the roles that I've gotten, it was because of that, you know? As much as I'd love to get it because of my talent. My talent, yes, I do the job well, but <laughs> the most important thing for them was the fact that she's very professional, she keeps time, so we want her in. So I, I think that's one thing I admire about myself. I value mm. my work. I really do. Wow, what yeah. is it? Is it are, are people, do people go to like auditions late and stuff? Are people not professionals in the industry? <laughs> People think this is Hollywood. Like, you think you get paid Hollywood money. Like, people act like drama kings. I mean, oh, gosh. I guess if there comes a time where you, you have to know your worth value. But address it accordingly. Like, you have to communicate it accordingly. Don't be, don't be an ass about it. Like, if you want to express your needs, express them accordingly. If you disagree, then disagree and just part ways amicably and then just move on because this is like the most I don't know it's the most crucial industry like I don't know how to put it because put danger I see a makeup artist can you know have a gossip moment with you and whatnot and there's there'll just be people around and it will just be one of the things that will affect you know, the person that they're talking about, it will affect their jobs because of, you know, there's everyone around and they'll be like, ah, this girl is impossible to work with. Ah, we worked with her this, on this other production and it was just, like, it was just too much. And I don't think anybody will want to work with this person ever again. So you just have to be smart when you're in those rooms and just, just do your job and go home. That's what I do. I do my job and I go home. I don't want I don't want any problems. If you don't want any problems, I'm not gonna complain about the food. I'm not gonna complain about anything. If I don't like the food, I bring my own lunchbox. I have no problems in doing that. I I just need to give my money and bounce. Unless if I'm voting for a cause, then that's a different story. But it still applies. Fight for it accordingly, express it accordingly, and then you'll be fine. Wow, is it is it the same when you gig as well? You go to a gig, and then immediately after a gig, you leave. You don't sit and maybe chat to the people, promoters. You know, maybe most of the, the time people I leave. Bit. It depends what kind of event I'm at. It really depends what kind of event, um, an event I'm at. So, but sometimes you have to be, you have to keep a little bit of mystery about, you know, about your life and what you do. They must want you back, man. They must want you back. Because that's how I got the gig. I was in Pumalang. I was playing there in 2018. I had on this pink hair and whatnot. And I played and I left. And then, I don't know, that week, it was... People were just, like, asking, who's that girl with the pink hair, man? I don't know her name, but, hi, man, she must come back again. Luckily, the waitress, um, some of the waitresses and the waiters knew me there. And they spoke to the boss. And I got my residency gig there. I used to play. I played the entire December. And it was just so dope. So sometimes mm. you have to, Mr. don't chill and then make be friends with everybody. No. no. Oh, okay. No, no I, 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 I'll take that advice, you know. When I go to a yeah. place and I enjoy the vibe, I'm like, yo, I want to stay forever, you know. I, so, no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Don't do that. Once in a while, yes. Have, have, have some fun. But yeah, mm. sometimes... Just do your thing. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. So I've asked you this personally, but you know I'm gonna do it publicly. When are you dropping music, or do you plan on dropping music? Like I'm not a producer. Like I'm not. I really just want to honestly. For now, this is my response. My honest response. For now, I really want to stick to DJing because I don't want to do too much. People produce and DJ and they like, they just do too many things. So right now I'm really in the space of just, I just want to play. I really just want to play and learn other techniques when it comes to, you know, DJing. I don't want to, I don't want to do too much in that space. So for now I'm a DJ. I'm not a producer. I'm not. Mm. So okay. new music, no, no. Okay. Not you you leave that to I woke up at the small and my party. Yeah, and people must the ones who know how to do it, 
they gladly they can do it so i for now i no i'm not in the producing headspace like i'm not trying to create any other music so yeah mm. no i'll just stick to djing and play mm-hmm. their songs and yeah and when and, and what, what are you playing right now what's your favorite genre at the moment um i love house i've always loved house like your afro tech like i just you know that that cup of vibe you know like that vibe like i just really that afro tech vibe going on lately i'm loving it but yeah dance mm. music basically like just dance music it's exactly what i love so who i didn't expect that change i didn't Can expect that answer. I didn't expect that answer because the last time I heard you said it was a pure ma piano uh said yes. <laughs> Where was this kind of I forgot where was this Oh uh, remember you were DJing in a bus the Hunters side oh, of bus Oh yeah cuz I was that... playing for Pretorians those people that's all they want like they're not trying to hear anything else so I was trying to you know I was at their team so yeah mm-hmm. that was just me adapt into you know what they would like to hear so yeah so 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 you you one of those people that you believe that you have to compromise and play for the crowd but i didn't play on my piano throughout like i had to switch it up because i started with like three tracks um mm-hmm. with on my piano and then you know i hopped into like you know like your old school house which they absolutely some of them they appreciated and then they there were those ones who were like ah about my piano there were those ones but yeah i mean my piano is not really I, i wouldn't play an entire set over my piano like i me it's 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 not i i love listening to it it's not really something i i would play for an hour no mm, okay tracks, then we keep it moving then we done <laughs> looking looking at the trends now what 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 sound do you think is will take over sa next you know on the dance floor? i think afro take i don't know mm. i think afro mzu dj mzu has a new single now it has that vibe as well i forgot the name of the song i heard it on metro last weekend but yeah he's releasing like an ep sometime soon so i'm looking forward to his album because i heard quite a few like a taste nyana of what mm. we should expect as listeners and i'm loving i'm loving afro tech like i feel like i'm not in south africa every time i listen to that kind of music so i like that vibe really my next like single is is afro tech eh? afro tech so is it uh, do you have yeah, a vocalist yeah, yeah, yeah. this time i wonder why you don't listen to my music all my songs are vocalists what do you mean yes yes okay i have okay <laughs> Okay. I have a dope vocalist. Uh yeah, so the so the song will be dropping soon, man. I'm very excited about that song. Is it? Uh, but yo, this is not about me. But I'll send you the song. I'm going to send it to you. No, you didn't. You said there was a first single that you did. Like you did like your first No, no, I sent you the first one. I yes, sent you the first that's one. That's the only one I have. With that yeah. something brown guy. What's his name again? No, no, no. Oh, God. Kind of guy. Yeah. Forgot his name. Yes. Yeah. Gas Brown. Yeah. No, I didn't say just like okay. My bad. No, I'm saying I'm going to send you the next one. I'm okay. going to give it to you. Oh, you're going to send me. Okay, cool. Okay, that's Okay. Fine. Yeah, sure. and then if you like no pressure, if you like it, you know, you can play it. But if you don't like it, man, it's, it's all love. I'm glad you're saying Afrotech is is, is is the future because I really 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 mess with with Afrotech. But anyway, mm. so yeah, man, and then and then who who, who are your favorite uh, DJs locally and why? I love the couple obviously and black coffee and there's this guy punk I can't pronounce his I, I don't know if it's his surname or what punk bezi or something punk punk bezi yeah mm-hmm. yes he played I was watching the lockdown this lockdown house party a few weeks ago and he played there and I, I absolutely love I loved I loved I loved his set I enjoyed it. So yeah, those three I guess. Cuz they mm. that's where I want to be. Like that's like they they have that international appeal. So that's really what I want for myself. Yeah. 
you know you know what um I, I i'll check his set i didn't check i haven't checked uh the set like i haven't watched any of the lockdown the ones is it yeah 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 <laughs> you don't watch tv i'm always on the internet i'm addicted to oh. the internet yeah mm. so if not missing if so I, much in tv so it's fine no i'm just saying like joe that i think i think that uh, shinza and ph the concept was built for it to be online and that's what made it successful but they had to make money you know and they took it to tv there was an so, online thing i heard there was an app or something no 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 so how the concept came about is that in me, i think the oh. first week, the first week of um the lockdown they hosted yeah. like an online concert the lockdown concert how oh. So okay. they played motion. They had Kabza and uh, Maporisa. They had they had quite a lot of guys, and it was so successful. I think, I think they had like over two hundred thousand views collectively, and then Channel. Uh, you know, I don't know who approached who, but Channel O was like, "Yo, we want this," and then they got it. You know, so I don't know. I'm I'm that guy. Like I feel like traditional media sucks. You know. But that's just me. I'm just a hater, maybe. But anyway, going going back to you, ma'am. Can you hear me? I feel like the 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 screen is your screen is a bit. Hello. I think I lost you. Damn. I think I lost. Man. This sucks. Okay, uh, Bukle. Bukle had internet connection uh, issues, so let's see if she can come back, and then we can add her back on the live stream. Uh, let me just let me just do this. Let me just. Uh, Bukle, ah, I'm gonna end it, and then I'm gonna start again. Eh?